Hey guys, I am out in Austin, Texas this week and recorded an episode with Keith and Michelle Norris, the founders of Paleo FX. If you're not familiar, Paleo FX is one of the biggest health events in the country, at least in my sector of health. It is the event to be at. They've created such an incredible um, organization full of people who are into health optimization, growth mindset, spirituality, everything that really makes you a healthy person inside and out, that's what they bring at Paleo FX. So it was an honor to be able to meet with them in their home here in Austin and really get into their hearts. Honestly, they just finished writing their book. Um, that'll be coming out soon. They'll tell you all about it and I'll link it, um, the name of it in the show notes so you can watch out for it and pre-order it. They're talking about their upcoming virtual Paleo FX event. So if you're listening to this podcast, when it releases it's next weekend so go get your tickets it's november 14th um 2020 is their virtual paleo effects event and michelle talks about how they've taken this really dynamic show that is paleo effects and they've put that into the virtual event so it sounds really rad definitely check that out that will be linked up also um, one thing I didn't expect in this episode is they really got into some personal stuff going on with them right now so if you're in the paleo world and you're in the know you know that they've been through some a little bit of trying times during 2020 um, and they got into that and their feelings about that and really just opened up their hearts and shared where they were coming from on some uh, tricky things inside of their their paleo community so i really really appreciated them being so um, open and vulnerable on all of those things um, i really want you to get to know keith and michelle because for me they've been two of my favorite people that i've met in the health industry um, i've only known them on a personal level for the last year or so and they've just been so stand out on being welcoming and kind um, and i just i really love them to death so i appreciate they're sharing their hearts in this episode with you guys today. So uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into it. Here is Keith and Michelle Norris. Hey guys, I'm here with Keith and Michelle Norris. If you guys are in the paleo community, you definitely know these two, the king and queen of paleo <laughs> um, and the founders of paleo effects. So today we want to talk about what paleo effects is. Um, they've got their virtual event. Uh, when we release this, it'll be the week after. So I wanted do you, to start off with, could you just tell people about the freaking massive culture <laughs> that you guys have created that is unbelievable, that is Paleo Effects, what it is? Well, um, Paleo Effects is usually, not in the days of COVID, <laughs> usually a three-day immersion event. It's into the lifestyle of Paleo. And so we have run the gamut from um, anything about regenerative ag agriculture all the way to spirituality. So we have the seven pillars of health, which is physical, mental, emotional, relational, spiritual, financial, and tribal. And then mm. we cover everything in between. So the regenerative agriculture, decentralization of markets, decentralization of healthcare, education, government, you name it. Mm -hmm. We I, talk about all of it. Yeah, I will add to that. Like <clears throat> what I what I found when I went to Paleo FX was like sometimes I'll get texts from clients that say, what's like, what's new? What's cutting edge right now? Like, what are you onto? Like, what's the latest in biohacking or like, mm -hmm. like food movement or, you mm -hmm. know, they want to be filled. If you want in on that, like paleo, to me, paleo effects is where that happens. Like yes. if you want to understand, um, not only like, yeah, the cool cutesy info of like <laughs> good food and real mm -hmm. food. Um, but if you also want to know like what's happening on a global perspective or what are we, mm -hmm. what's going on with the government? Like I was so impressed by that mm -hmm. at paleo effects. I was like, wow, this is where you come. If you like really want to be in the know of what's happening in the world in regards to food and health, like it's yeah. amazing how you guys bring that. Yeah. Well, the, the main thing, the main reason we do that is because in our opinion, um, paleo is not just about a diet. It's about the lifestyle. Mm. And so in order to be a fully optimized human being, you have to have all the seven pillars of health totally. um, dialed in and optimized. And so we that's why we talk about all of those things because a lot of people are like, what's spirituality have to do with a, a diet conference? Well, we're not a diet conference. Right. Actually, the diet is a very small portion mm -hmm. because the diet is so varied because you know, everybody's individual and everyone needs to have their own diet. And so 
Um, Keith's um, paleo diet looks very different than mine, that I bet yours would be looking very different. Some people are far more keto, some are more towards the low carb, some are very strict paleo, some mm -hmm. are primal where they do a lot of dairy, and so it just really depends. And it really is about what works for you, because at the end of the day, somebody can tell you what the science is, but once you use it and you know how you feel, you know what works for you. It doesn't matter what the science says. Amen. So. <laughs> Um, the thing is, is, and we, we have a lot of science at Paleo FX. Everything, everything that we do is backed by science and it still comes down to what works for the individual. So that's why, um, and when we realize that all of these things really encompass being a healthy human being, and that's really mm -hmm. what paleo is about is being a fully optimized human being and, and it encompasses everything. Yeah. And to any one of those pillars can train wreck a person mm -hmm. if they're not optimized mm -hmm. or if they're failing it can be a weak link and we've seen this so many mm -hmm. times um, with the entrepreneurs that we've worked with um, they may have the financial side you know mm -hmm. figured out and their health and or relationships are a train wreck mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that brings them down as an individual and they can't express their genius mm -hmm. and that that's the whole intent with paleo effects and what we do is that is our genius is to be able to bring people together and mm -hmm. do this mm -hmm. and the intent is to help others express their genius into the mm -hmm. world yeah and mm -hmm. and for us to be able to do that if we can get people optimized in those seven areas of life you know that's a big deal mm -hmm. yeah you guys i mean that is definitely your genius you guys are facilitating <clears throat> creating a space for so much synergy to mm -hmm. happen between people who are looking to optimize their lives like i mean i'm so grateful to you guys because i can't tell you how many people i have in my life now purely from going to paleo effects last mm -hmm. year like we're speaking of regenerative agriculture like i met um eric perner of rep provisions mm -hmm. at at uh, paleo effects last year and yeah. like i mean i've been in tears listening to him talk about what regenerative agriculture mm -hmm. is i i found that at paleo mm -hmm. effects and i think like like sometimes i'll get messages from people and they're like how do you like I don't have people like that in my life. Like I don't have this tribe of like health conscious, mm. mindful, like meditation, right. you know, mindset people. And I'm like, yeah, cause you have to go, I tell them all the time. I'm like, just go to paleo effects is literally like what I say. I'm like, you have to put yourself out there yeah. a little bit and be proactive enough to like buy a ticket to paleo effects, right. show up go to like have go to a class mm -hmm. take it not only are you going to like take in somebody else's genius like you mm -hmm. say because right. when i listened to some of the people on the panels last year like you can't help but be inspired just by the way that they think when they're right. speaking it's just mm -hmm. kind of like got it mm -hmm. i could use some growth there that's mm -hmm. really freaking cool i felt something yeah um or just the other people that are attending like you just learn um it's like you would learn intuitively just by being around other people, but you have to be proactive enough to do that. But yeah, yeah you guys, I mean, genius at facilitating a space that draws that in. And it's got to be from these pillars because yeah, right. mm -hmm. it's like once you get healthy, you can't help but see that it has to be all of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you guys are also talking about that in your book yes. that's yes. coming up. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So we have, yeah, the book, it's been, uh, this has been a few weeks of sprinting to get our book done. And then we have our virtual event on, um, the 14th. And so that is right now just so that's it's probably the biggest thing for us yes. right now. Yeah. We, we do have to have the book in. Um, by tomorrow, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, guys, they're in the link um, on the show notes. I'll have a link to get the tickets yeah. for the event. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, the virtual event is going to be really incredible. It took us a long time to find a platform that was as dynamic as what we need because, you know, you've been to the actual show. It's a very dynamic show. Very. There's, yeah. there's a lot going on yes. at the same time. And so um, to put Paleo FX into a virtual event, was not an easy undertaking. And so we are mm -hmm. d doing everything we can to try to get it to, it's never gonna be the same as the real thing, obviously. Right. So we can't wait for, for that to happen in April of next year. And we're still really working hard to make this as, as um, 
dynamic and as interactive as paleo fx is as, as possible yeah Ooh. let's let's discuss that for a second right. like what what can people expect at the virtual event what's what's um, going down we have amazing speakers we are um we have a lot of incredible exhibitors and sponsors that will be there so we, we will have an exhibitor floor so you can huh. go into the booths virtually oh, cool. and we are going to gamify that so you earn points for however many um uh, exhibitors and sponsors you visit That's cool. and then we there were, will be prizes and everything for people to win based on where and there will um, so cool. it, there's a lot of stuff going on so lots of really great talks um, we had planned at the 2020 live event um, we've been working on it for the last two years and the the um, it just the timing just didn't work out for us to have our very first Spanish speaking panel oh wow which is super I'm super wow, excited cool. about and so um, the group that wanted to put it on, we they weren't able to um, uh, get things worked out for it to happen in 2019. So we had it planned for 2020, and then of course we got canceled. So we are going to do it on the virtual. So oh, cool. that's uh, that's going to be the easiest way for them to pull this off. And then I'm hoping that they're going to be able to come to the live event in 2021 because yeah. um, we and we're trying to get several Spanish speaking talks and panels so very that cool. there is a very large group of Spanish um, speaking paleo people. Really? So we wanted to be able to to cater to that group. Super so, yeah. right. I'm a Spanish major. I have a degree in Spanish. So oh, wow. I super okay. appreciate that. Like oh, that's cool. the love. And that's what I love about you guys is you're continuously in service. Yeah. Like you're always like, how can we help more people? And that right. is the vibe, you know. I even I remember you were sitting on a panel um, last year and somebody, a lady had asked, like, what are you guys doing to service the deaf community? You know, right. and Rob's like, actually I get everything, Trisca. And it's just it's this very loving, like, mm -hmm. what are we doing? How are we extending out of this little like microcosmic, <clears throat> like super elite, you know, yeah. like instead of just being like lucky us, we're so awesome because we're so healthy and thriving, like right. that's not cool. And mm -hmm. you guys continuously are like thinking how well, can we serve more people? It's also the reason why we've kept our our ticket price so low is we don't yeah. want the barrier to entry to be mm. so high that it doesn't we don't actually um, serve the people that really need this information the most. We give away a lot of tickets every single year yeah. too. Um, and the Spanish community lot. is near and dear to our hearts because we both grew up in South Texas mm -hmm. and we mm. we know the 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 poverty and the poverty driven by poor health mm -hmm. and because it's rampant in South mm -hmm. Texas mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and a great friend of ours uh, Guillermo Ruiz mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. grew up in South Texas mm -hmm. so he gets it and, yeah. and he's going to be on that panel as right. well mm -hmm. along with uh, Luis Villasenor awesome. so it'll be it, it'll be fantastic and yes so this is something that is is near and dear to us because we live so close to it we grew up in that mm -hmm. area and we know that that you know we, one entity can't serve the, everything, but I think if we all pick pieces that we are very near and that and that touches us and affects us and we know mm -hmm. very, very well and we all do our part, I mean, mm -hmm. we can lift all boats mm -hmm. and right. this mm -hmm. is our part. We know this and uh, so we and think we can really help. The other, the other so people on beautiful. the Spanish panel are Melina Vicario, who is... Um, a lot of people might know her from Univision, um, so she's mm -hmm. been on shows cool. there, and Hilda Gore, and they are um, incredible, have incredible followings, and really great, um, give a lot of really great information. Um, they came to Paleo FX in 2018, and um, we, they interviewed us and everything, and we really, um, and tried to get this put, pulled off in 2019 but it didn't happen so ah. anyway so we're we're excited it's going to happen cool. in yep. the virtual event yeah. and then hopefully in the 2021 event so yeah yeah spread the word guys if you know anybody who speaks spanish that yes wants to come right. to the health, sure. like that's Definitely. that's where we do our part like keith was saying mm -hmm. like we share you know like right. don't just keep it to yourself like actually proactively like hey you might want to check this thing out you mm -hmm. never know the ripple effect that that can have yes. in their life and their kids and their grandma or whoever you right. know right sharing is caring for sure and yeah. um well know, that and we're always looking for um um any any um we want a lot of cultural diversity at pill effects so we are mm -hmm. if anyone knows any um speakers of color and any speakers asian um we want to make sure that we're covering all the bases and we cover all 
all different um, cultures because yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we are all humanity. So yeah. we, it doesn't matter what color, size, you know, what gender, whatever, you're welcome at Pillow Effects and yeah, we love everyone. These seven pillars are a human thing. That's not mm -hmm. a race creed thing at Amen. all. I mean, yeah. it is a human thing. So to the extent each of these seven pillars affects each of us the same. Mm -hmm. No matter what creed, no matter what color, no matter what gender, whatever, they affect you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you guys have create, fostered the most welcoming environment ever. Like, it's sometimes I find, you know, in health circles, it can be like, oh, we're like in the cool kids club. Like, this is our mm -hmm. thing. And like, are you in or are you guys like I everyone that I've seen you meet, like you make them feel like so welcome. It's so, so welcoming. Mm -hmm. And, um, I actually want to hit on that a little bit. Cause when you talk about these seven pillars and you said one of them was tribal, mm -hmm. like that's not something you usually hear no. as a pillar right. of health. You hear like mind, body, soul, you right. know, or whatever, but it's all like self. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I recently I've been reading um, the seven habits of highly effective people again. Mm -hmm. And that book is so beautiful. And he talks about interdependence, how mm -hmm. a lot of growth, we go on this solo road. Like I have to do it myself. I've got to meditate by myself and learn how to eat by myself and do my mindset work by myself and journal. And it's self, self, self. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you guys expand on why you put tribal mm. in your pillars. Well, um, it's really funny because um, we initially had six pillars. Mm. And one day it hit me that, um, holy crap, we, how did we miss tribal? That's like basic. And, <laughs> and then, so it became seven. Um, mm. and the reason being is that it, in all honesty, we are tribal. We are made for community. We are created to be in community. And, um, when you go back and particularly, and it makes no sense that we miss this, um, mm. at all, but if, if you go back and you take a look at um, our ancestors and the way that they um, lived, then you see that they lived in community. They they had to in order to survive. They needed each other. They needed, um, like Keith keeps talking about, how we want to optimize so you can express your genius. Well, somebody's genius in the tribe was knowing how to find the animals in the hunt. And then somebody's genius in the tribe was knowing where to look for, you know, the the fruits and vegetables and what have you, the, the, the things that they could gather. And someone in the tribe was a medicine person and someone, so everybody had their genius and the whole mm. tribe actually really revolved all around each other and they all had to rely on each other. And when you think about it, that's really the way we are meant to be. And because we are all connected, that's the only way we will survive is if we all recognize that we are in tribe mm -hmm. together, that we are all tribe humanity at the end of the day. I don't care what color, creed, sex, um, gender that you identify with, whatever that may be, left, right, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Right. At the end of the day, it all comes down to humanity and we're all connected. We are all just one degree away from each other. Right. And um, genetically and everything. And so it's really incumbent upon us to choose our tribes and be in tribe with the people that really, really um, help lift you and, and, and help make you a better person and can, and can also be like, uh, you know, be your accountability. Hey, uh, mm -hmm. that was kind of screwed up right there. What you just did. Can you, let's figure out how to, you to not do that again. Right. Because at the end of the day, when we do things like that, and if we can help each other lift up and be better people, then we lift everybody. Right. And it's, that's, that's something that we're not seeing right now. Right. We're seeing a lot of the opposite. We're mm -hmm. seeing the division, the tearing right. apart, which is by design. It's, this is all happening by design. Um, right now, the powers that be want us divided because the more we divide and fight with ourselves, the less we can pay attention to what they're doing and, and fight with them over what they're doing and actually do something about it. And so it's really, um, it's, it's really sad to see all of that happening. Mm -hmm. And yet that is what is occurring. And that's why you're seeing, you know, social justice warriors, you're seeing mm -hmm. cancel culture, all of this stuff happening instead of people actually sitting down and having conversation and saying, Hey, what you said really offended me. And I want to understand why you feel that way. And this is something that's really interesting. Um, I have Theo Wilson who, um, 
I have uh, his, his TED talk on my Facebook, which I posted. Probably the best um, Facebook, I mean, the best, one of the best TED talks I've ever seen, particularly around racism. And he, um, he's going to be speaking at Pillow Effects in 2021. We're trying to figure out if it's going to work out for him to be at the virtual event, but he's planning to be at the 2021 event. And he infiltrated um, the alt-right movement to understand why people were so racist. And what he realized is if anybody's seen Social Dilemma, you see that what happens, and particularly with what they're doing with big tech and everything, is that they they keep, everybody's got their own lens on the world. And there are as many people as there are out there, there's that many realities happening. And right. so it's it's interesting to watch the left and the right, and then watch the black and the white and the you're either for the police or you're against the police and all of this stuff. And at the end of the day, the only way for us to, to ever get past any of it is to come together and talk. Right. And that's not happening. It's, I am never speaking to you again. You right. are, you know, right. you are canceled, blah, 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 right. blah. Right. And there's no, con in, no conversation. And he basically goes in to communities and he helps them sit down and actually go through and talk and, um, his talk was incredible and I was so blown away by it and the fact that he said that he infiltrated so he could understand them and then he totally understood why they were racist and why they had the position mm. that they had because he, he, he didn't still didn't think it was right. He still didn't agree with it, but he understood it and he understood mm -hmm. them and had compassion for them because what they have thrown at them 24-7, 365 days a year by social media, by the media, by whatever is going on is this whole scenario. Mm -hmm. So you're getting fed what tends to be in your, you know, whatever you tend to gravitate towards. They know us better than we do, which is kind of scary, <laughs> but they know exactly how to get marketing to us and to get us in to things and get us to really, um, what, what I found really interesting is um, particularly like the day that George Floyd died and that video came out, I got a push notification for that video. And I saw that video like probably a couple of hours after it happened and I was showing it to Keith and I was like, what in the hell? Like whatever. And then what I realized is that got pushed out intentionally across to a whole lot of people to get them stirred up mm -hmm. because it's not, it was not a, a, a channel that I ever watched or did anything with. And it's, these things are intentional to get us all fighting and arguing. And so Halo FX, one of the things that we really intend to do, and particularly with our book coming out, is we've got to unify, or we're never changing this, this whole thing. If mm -hmm. we do not unify, we don't talk, we mm -hmm. don't get together, we're going to keep being controlled by, you know, the powers that be. I mean, if you, under, if you understand the, the complete value of tribe and how so very important it is, and just look at these areas that are in total lockdown mm -hmm. and see the mental health issues that crop up from that. that that's mm -hmm. what happens when you isolate mm -hmm. people from other people. So there's one thing, there's well, the mental health issues and then there's- And suicide is up, by the way, 475% right now. Wow. And, then, and, and then so is drug abuse and alcohol abuse and child abuse. Anyway, go ahead. And then you are, when, when a person is isolated from other people like that, then you are that much more susceptible to the isolation bubble that social media mm -hmm. and um, mainstream media have funneled at you. Mm -hmm. Now you're even more susceptible there. So then you get locked into that bubble of like-minded thinking and you never have to face outside ideas, and mm -hmm. it's just a double down totally. effect. Totally. Yeah. So tribe is hugely important. Yeah, yeah, I think this message is. Oh, here we go. Just so we can. Make sure okay. Can. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, I think uh, this message <clears throat> is hyper important right now. Like I know you guys have taken a lot of accusations and hate mm -hmm. lately on social mm -hmm. media, and so have I. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think almost every influencer. It's like I'm getting. DM'd for not posting enough social issue stuff. And I'm like, this is a health channel. Like, I, I mean, I did some, I'm gonna, right. what intuitively feels right to me, I'm gonna share and like, mm -hmm. and it was really mind boggling to me. Um, some of the accusations, even by people that I considered friends. And right. I was like, oh wow, okay. Um, and 
you know, what comes to mind as you guys were talking about that was again, this, the seven habits, one of those principles is seek first to understand Mm -hmm. then to be understood. And when we don't, you know, how often are you in person with someone and they say something that makes you so angry that you're just going to start slamming them? Like almost never, you know, like, but here we stay in our isolated environments. We get super on this rabbit hole of this is how I think. And then as soon as somebody opposes that, we want to slam them and it's, and I really think it's a result of like your tribe, if your tribe is yourself, yeah. it's like every man for himself, you yeah. know what I mean? But like coming together, that's why I think events, I personally, like, I'm like, please get a ticket to paleo effects so we can keep having paleo effects yeah. <laughs> because it, in my opinion, it is like the ultimate of all um, connections for people who are seeking for more in their life. Like I've never been to anything that represents that more of like really beautiful growth mindset, people Mm -hmm. who want to serve, who want to love, who want to become better. And I think as we become more digital, like that is going to be the most rare commodity, the thing that brings heart and soul to your life. So I love that you guys like, added that as one of your pillars because yeah. you definitely embody that and um kind of what you were saying about like everybody somebody's the medicine man and somebody's the hunter right. and somebody's the gatherer and all that <clears throat> you do that so well at paleo effects because mm-hmm. it's like all these little people i've seen on social media who do like animal flows or <laughs> yeah <laughs> this right. cool lifting thing like everybody gets you so many people get a little uh piece of the of the time to be able to share their genius well, there's all a, day. There's it's so pretty. something it's so for everybody. Yeah. After effects. That's one thing. But the other part of it too, <clears throat> is that we have intentionally um, made paleo effects um, to not be an echo chamber. Right. Hmm. Our, um, our ethos and was our theme last year for the 2019 event was challenge authority, defy dogma, demand different. And oh. it was that for mm-hmm. a reason. Yes. Because at the end of the day, what happens is if you get yourself into an echo chamber or a vacuum, you don't, there's no growth. There's no change. There is only progress when you have dissension. And so we have constantly, and we've gotten crap for it, which is interesting to me because it's always been our ethos. We've gotten a lot of crap for bringing in different ideas. Well, I can tell you, we do not 100% agree with every speaker that's ever been on our stage. (laughs) It just isn't. And we bring people in that we don't agree with That's on cool. purpose. That's cool. Because the only way for you to make sure you don't have dogma is to keep Oof. challenging your belief. Yes. And if you can't challenge your belief and it's so weak that you can't challenge it, mm. then you're already screwed. And so that's the big thing for us about Paleo FX. That's just not it's, business. That's personal. For that us. is personal. It's amazing. Personal, so constantly mm. confronted purposely with ideas that uh-huh. I don't agree with. Uh huh. So that I can try to understand and and know what the other side is thinking. I don't have yep. to agree with everything that can in fact I don't want to agree with everything. That's very boring. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I love to be challenged. I challenge myself daily personally with ideas that I do not agree with mm-hmm. or challenge ideas that I have and see if they still resonate with me. Right. Constantly. And it's not an easy thing to do. It's uncomfortable a lot of times uh-huh, to do that. Uh-huh. Um, but I think it's vitally important. It's important for your health. It's important well, for it, you to be a, a citizen of the world to be able to do that because you will change over time. Right, because you're not right. the same person. You are probably almost none of us are the same person we were in, uh, in on January 1st. Because <laughs> yeah. you talk about a complete night and day shift. And this is, these are the things that can completely yep. um, either decimate who a person is or they can actually. And I've honestly seen this entire thing, COVID-19 and the, the whole racial thing. I have seen this as an, a massive opportunity to up level and to become mm. a better human and to understand. And what's interesting is. Um, we, we reached out to all of the people who made accusations, every single person, and not a single one of them would s- talk to us. Wow. There was one person who spoke to us, but never made any accusations. And actually, um, he's the single black speaker that, that, um, everybody was like kind of, uh, concerned about. Um, he actually reached out to us, got on the phone call with us for two and a half wow. hours. 
And the thing is, is that he never made any accusations. He wanted to understand Beautiful. what we were thinking and what was, what was going on. And the rest of them all absolutely flatly refused to get on a phone call with us because we were like, you're, we've been friends with these people for over 10 years. They've yeah. known us for 10 yeah. years. And it was heartbreaking for them to just suddenly think that we changed into some different people. Right. The misunderstanding of what Keith posted was so, it's, it's a sign of the times. Right. And, it's, mm -hmm. and the thing is, is that it made a lot more sense for them to stay behind a computer and do all the stuff and be mm -hmm. social justice warriors on the computer mm -hmm. instead of actually facing us. And I will, I'm just going to say right here, right now, if any of them see this, we, totally, we will speak to you in person <laughs> on Always. social media, on social media, completely live, not edited, not anything and have a discussion about this because it's the only way for us to get right. better. Right. Because I can honestly say we're, I mean, that's just not who we are. We're just not right. I totally understand why it was misunderstood. I read it and said to him, wow, I totally see how, what the, I know you. So I don't, that part, they know you. I'm surprised that they came right. to this, but just having a conversation before you destroy somebody else and a friendship. That's yeah. the other part was, that was the hardest part was sure. that these were people that were friends that we have known for over 10 years and they've known us. And so that part was the hard part. And it's like, okay, and we love them. We're not mad at them. We're not angry with them. We totally understand the situation and feel for them that this was the choice they made the decision for. But you know, if any of them ever want to have a conversation live, we're happy to do it on social media, off social media, whatever you want. We are open always, and that's the that's the way Paleo Effects will always be, and the way we will always be. I love that, and I, I think it's a it's a lesson, it's a it's a message that needs to be heard right now. If anybody doesn't know what Michelle's talking about, like Keith posted right. something that took a lot of flack, and a lot of people were offended. And I heard, I was telling them before we started. I read the post. I didn't think anything of it. I just felt like you were being philosophical and you were like sharing some deep feelings of your heart. I didn't take it as racist or anything it like that. Not even close. The, um, the irony of is that how entire supportive. post was I, it was meant that we are all in this together. together. Yeah. yeah. And we're it was very supportive together. actually. Um, so, so it's interesting because we actually have black family members and we have black friends and that doesn't precludes you from being racist. Not at all. That doesn't say that you are not racist just because you have black family or black friends, but all of them read it and not a single black person that we're wow. friends with. Every single one of them said we didn't see anything racist in it. His post was basically, essentially, um, is it a coincidence that the last five black men that have been in police custody that have died, that their last words were, I can't breathe. And in fact, we found out later, um, a couple of weeks later, it's actually 70, 70, 70 black men in police custody that have died and their last words were, I can't breathe. And so because he had just been done a thing with Josh Trent on breath work and we had done actually um, a medicine ceremony and he had all of the breath start, you know, you, you learn that in medicine ceremony to get through the rough stuff, you breathe through it. And... I think people thought he was saying, well, if George would have just breathed, he would have lived. That's not, not what he was saying. He was basically saying <clears throat> the problem that we have right now is you, you're seeing that I can't breathe. We're all being asked to wear these masks. So now we can't breathe and we are all, we are all one. And if we don't stop some of this, um, what's going to happen? And then there's also the different scenarios. There's a lot of black people who believe that George Floyd was killed at the hands of a, just a random act of a racist cop. There's a lot of black people that are friends with us who believe that it's a psyop and that it was intended to create racial tension because we didn't get pissed off enough and cause enough havoc with the, with the fact that we were all in lockdown and all of that stuff. And then there is a third scenario where um, there are a lot of them that believe that nobody died, that it, the whole thing was completely, um, the second one, I'm sorry, wasn't the psyop. It was, it was set up for him to die and it to, for, to create the race tension. And the third one is that nobody actually died and that there is, it was a complete psyop set up to do all of this. And there's a lot of compelling evidence across all three of them. Mm -hmm. And Keith is saying, we need to look at all of them because if it's a random racist cop, that's bad. 
But if it's these other two yeah. things, it's a lot <clears throat> worse. We have a bigger, then. it's a bigger problem. And the fact that, um, you know, we had, um, one of the things that D Daryl brought up to us when we talked to him, he said, oh, well, it just seemed like you were basically saying that there is no racism. And we were like, that's like having a conversation about the weather. And we all have to agree before we have the conversation that the sky is blue. We are absolutely believe there's racism and there is systemic racism. What are we going to do about it? Like, because is mm -hmm. it this bad? Is it this bad? Or is it this bad? Mm -hmm. Like, they all are shitty co cons uh, consequences here. All of them are shitty. But we're talking these get a whole lot worse. And if we use shame as a device to mm -hmm. keep people from pushing to find out the truth of right. a matter, right. that's right. a bad place to be. That's, no matter what the question is, whether exactly it's racism, right. whether it's... Uh, <clears throat> propaganda and mainstream media, what, no matter what, but if you use shame, especially people to people to people to people, mm -hmm. to use shame device to keep people shut down so they don't seek the truth, that this means that the that the people who are in power run rampant. Right. Yeah. And that's what's and happened. That's, yeah. That's what exactly I, what's happened. And what I what I love about you sharing like that you have friends mm -hmm. who have different beliefs and different ideas. Right. But they're all still your friends, right? Well, and this is, is the really thing. key. We have not. <laughs> this is the thing. I don't think any of us knows what the real truth is, right? right? We don't. There, and I don't know that we'll ever know. But the thing is, is we all need to. All of us need to know that there's these three scenarios out there, and we need to all figure out for ourselves what that is. And I can tell you honestly, we still don't have a conclusion because there's so much evidence of each one. And at the end of the day, you know. Um, do our police departments need to answer for and, and be accountable for the fact that they actually um, do things that are not right and that they put people in harm's way and that they actually harm? Yes. Does that mean that all of our cops are bad? No. But this is at the, it's like, um, so I saw a meme not that long ago and it was like, good teachers, bad teachers, there's a few. Good cops, bad cops, there's a few or whatever. And it's, and it's, bad politicians there's a whole lot <laughs> and a very few lot of good uh, uh, very few good politicians i mean very few and that is our real problem mm -hmm. it's that we need to stop believing we have a two-party system we need to start actually this is the deal how many times have you said i'm voting for the lesser of two evils or i'm voting against someone Sure. Instead of voting for someone and the fact that we are the United States of America, we're the best country in the world um, and other countries look to us for us to be the leader of the of the world and of the free world. And hopefully we stay that way. But the thing is, is that we have two horrible candidates mm -hmm. that because we believe we have two. instead of looking to the fact that and voting for other things when we believe in something that we believe in. Uh, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, that's throwing away a vote. And I'm like, no, it's actually voting for what you want. Right. We keep voting right. away from what right. we don't want. So get, guess what we're getting, what we don't want. And that is the problem is that mm. we have two horrible candidates to choose from. This is the best that, that the United States has. I mean, let's be honest, y'all. And the thing is, is it's because the whole system is completely corrupt and we need to get rid of the entire system. The whole two party system needs to go away. And then we will finally be able to come because at the end of the day, the majority of people in the United States are pretty middle of the road. I mean, you do have some far right conservatives and you do have some far left liberals and that's gonna always be the case. But the majority of the United States is in the middle. The majority of the United States wants the government to be financially responsible with the money that we give them. And they want the government to stay the hell out of their bedroom. Hmm. And so that's really the majority of the country. And at the end of the day, that's what we need. We need the government to get out of our bedrooms and get out of being moral, you know, I don't know. You can't, you can't do that. Well, without going down a very, very, very deep rabbit hole for your listeners or watchers, if they will just look at game theory and what happens when you constantly pick, uh, when you constantly vote against, against, mm. against, mm. and just see how that 
plays out over time. It's exactly where we're at right now. That's the game theory of voting against. I love this. I love what you're saying because I keep thinking of so many parallels to health mm -hmm. as you're talking about these things. One, defy dogma. I love, I was just talking to my friend Barton Scott who knows you guys really right. well. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if there's one thing I can't stand in the health industry, it's dogma. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is the way and this is the only way. And just think like this and get brainwashed and like stay right there. And he's like, oh, you need a shirt from Keith and Michelle. They can defy dogma. I'm like, I love them. Gosh, yeah. yes. And that's it's really all. That's yeah. how it's on your wristband right now. You should I give that it, to love her. It, love it. Yeah. In <laughs> but, fact, <laughs> this right now. Yay. Thank you. They just gave it to me. Yay. I will be wearing this for eternity. Defy dogma. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, because. There's a couple of things. One, going back to saying we have speakers at Paleo Effects that we don't agree with. There right. is so much lesson to be learned for mm -hmm. so many people mm -hmm. right there. Last night, I, you know what I spent my night doing by myself here in Austin? Researching if it's really true that gluten is bad for everyone. And I'm reading all of the sources that right. I don't normally read. I'm right. like, I want to put myself in a totally different paradigm, not just my David Perlmutters and, Perlmutters right, yeah. and all my people that I normally get info mm -hmm. from. Let's go on like random other people. I'm going to read Healthline actually for, I'm just going to put my brain in this playland for right. a minute and just, and just examine something that's outside of my current paradigm, because I feel like that's the only way to grow. And what you guys are saying, all of this, what you're saying and that you're brave enough and bold enough to speak out on is just saying like, Hey, this is how we see things. And mm -hmm. I think it's so important for all of us to be able to consider other opinions and be mm -hmm. strong enough in ourselves to weigh it out in our minds, see if it feels true yep. for us. And if it doesn't, that's okay that other people feel that way. Maybe it's important for them and their path to feel mm -hmm. that way. And I think like the lesson I'm hearing from all of this from you guys is to welcome diverse thoughts, mm -hmm. welcome and consider diversity and opinions mm -hmm. and still be able to love the human behind that. Like I'm sure right. you don't hate that speaker at your panel. Like you're just like, Hey, you know what? I, I don't see it that way, but let's give voice to a variety of opinions. And I think that's like something that needs to be heard so much right now, because truly mm -hmm. like you and I both, I, I had people that I was like, wow, I thought they were my friend. And that was freaking brutal. What they just did to me on social media, like, Oh, and, and, yeah. um, and still we love the person. We not, right. might not like the behavior. Right. It, that's exactly we what I was going to say. I was so going to say the exact <laughs> thing. And, and, right. So, and right now we're just clumping or, society in general is clumping behavior and people together as if they're inseparable. Right. So if you yes. are on the left and we don't, right. and we don't agree with you or you are in the right and we don't agree with you, you are that person and you are inherently, right. yes. I, that's stuff I'm seeing. Right. Like you're evil. You right. need to go to, you need to go to re-education camp. What the actual fuck? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, are we kidding with yeah. this? The, at the end of the day, everybody has a reason that they believe the things that right. they do. And that is all the right. programming that has happened from to them from the day that they were right. born to now. And it's, and the thing is, is a lot of times that programming is not really theirs. They don't necessarily believe it. It's just what they, this is all that they know. Mm -hmm. And so when somebody, when you get outside of what you have actually been told all of your life, I can tell you. Keith and I, talk, our programming from when we were little to now is we have undone so much of that mm -hmm. and had to reprogram it, ourselves it to think. Work. It's mm -hmm. not yeah. It's, it's not work. easy. Go through and unhook it, yourself from. And wow. it's not fun. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not fun. But it's the whole thing is, is that when you realize that everybody is entitled to their opinion. Yeah. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. Period. And it's not for me to say what that should be. Right. Except for, for my own. I don't even have a, I can't even have a say on what he believes. And that's the thing is, is that when we start really understanding this control mechanism that, that is trying to, you know, play out over the, particularly the United States right now and the censorship and the things that are going on, I honestly believe that this is all really intentional. Mm -hmm. It's done so that we all see it and we start realizing how bad this is and that we have to stop it. Because at the end of the day, if 
even if I don't agree with you about your opinion, I will fight to the death for you to be able to express that opinion. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because that is That's what freedom. this is. That was <laughs> yeah. the whole freedom. reason our forefathers came here exactly. and left England exactly. was so that we would be completely free to be able to ever express. And right now what we are seeing is what happened when the KGB was in, in control of the, uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. And we are, we are getting dangerously close to that where people are saying, you don't have a right to your opinion. Mm -hmm. And that's just never going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Right. It's when the people, <clears throat> like you were saying earlier, when the people are, when we're turning against each other, now, now that we have a real that's problem. The, so it's one thing for, for a media to be controlled in that message, but it's, it's another step and another degree for us to monitor each other. Right. Right. And to shame each other and to silence. That's when it gets really dicey. I mean, just study any totalitarian. We're, we're there. We're getting there. We it's scary. A friend who lived in communist uh, Romania mm -hmm. until she was 12 and she will tell you how neighbor went against neighbor because they were incentivized to rat each other out to keep and, each other and we have that happening we have that happening that. in New York and we <laughs> have it happening want that I we have it happening in New York and in California you are incentivized to tell on your neighbor right. if they are not social distancing and they are not wearing their mask and they are not whatever and I'm like what that in the is her hell control. that is herd yeah. control it is, and that's classic propaganda. That is how it works and how insidious it gets because it ends up feeding to the people. Because now, right now, instead of people understanding that we are all one, I am one expression of you. He is one expression of me. We are an expression of each other. Y'all are an expression of each other. If we don't understand that very quickly and very soon, the problem that we have is we are, are now afraid of our neighbors. Right. What yeah. the yeah, fuck? That's crazy. And I and there and we're talking about whether you believe that the the, the coronavirus is real or a, a pandemic or a plandemic, whatever you whatever you think, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, right now, the CDC says that only six percent of all of the deaths, which um, were we were over two hundred thousand, so that's approximately twelve thousand deaths only died of COVID. So we're talking about this being the rest of those people mm -hmm. all had serious comorbidities and were going to be di probably die within the next, they said six to months to a year. Don't think it's okay for anybody to die. And yet this is the thing. This is one of the most survivable mm -hmm. <laughs> viruses that has ever come into our purview. If and we were, were hold on. Going in. Yeah, That's it is the most survivable if you're healthy and not one thing has been said by the government, by Fauci, by anybody about improving your health, improving your immunity, improving um, the way that you eat, all of those things. Instead, what's happening is all this fear porn, which actually reduces immunity and mm -hmm. makes you more susceptible yeah. to it. And then this fear that your neighbor might actually kill you when you're even people. Let, let's be honest. Trump get, got COVID-19. We're not, that man is not the healthiest man there is. So for a, what, how old is he? 74, 73, Four something or other. Anyway, I don't even know. Um, for him who wasn't even, um, isn't even that healthy as far as real optimized health like us. I'm not worried about getting it. I know that if I get it, I'm surviving. Mm -hmm. I may feel like shit for a few days, mm -hmm. but I'm just not, I'm not that worried about it. And the problem is, is that, People were told to be terrified of it. If they hadn't been told to be terrified of it, would you have been? Like the bird flu, H1N1, was actually more lethal and actually came into this country and took out more people, just H1N1, nothing else, no pre... Um, and they weren't really, they weren't counting everything as that particular thing. And yet nobody was worried about it because they didn't they tell us to be to. worried about it. it. Yeah, I'm hearing from you guys that you're very pro-freedom. And very anti-fear. Yes. Right. And yeah. um, you know, on that note, my mom had a really right. massive stroke in January and is mm. in a nursing facility into here in Texas, actually. And, and she got COVID. And she has diabetes. She's had type two diabetes, and she got COVID. Mm -hmm. So she's like, she can't even walk. You know, she's losing her memory. Mm -hmm. She's in really bad, poor health. Mm -hmm. 
she was fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, I sent her supplements and, you know, and that's my the thing. Had, and that was beautiful and wonderful. And, but like just watching her go through that and she, the whole time she's like trying to take her oxygen off. She's like, I'm fine. Like, I don't even feel sick. Like, um, and so it was really, really kind of interesting to watch that. But I keep thinking like little ticks keep popping up in my mind as you guys are talking about this of how much it actually parallels to health, like your viewpoints on health. Like mm -hmm. I can see all around because, you know, you talk about this echo chamber and like not living in this uh, environment of don'ts, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, fear, 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 fear. And I see, I actually see that a lot in health communities mm -hmm. right now. You know, it's like, don't eat this, don't eat that. That'll hurt you. That'll hurt you. That'll hurt you. That'll hurt. You. Of course there's for a lot of people that there's right. truth in that. But if we focus on that versus focusing on the choosing, like you were talking about with voting of like choosing good, what do you want? What mm -hmm. fills you? What is actually proactive instead of like avoid, 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 you know, how much better of a place can you be in this, in your power versus living in this fear mindset, the lesser of two evils, you know, yeah. I, I see that you guys represent that in everything that you're doing is you're trying to pull in, freedom, inclusion, choice, connection, um, mm -hmm. instead of this like isolation, fear, avoidance, um, uh, canceling, right. you know, culture. So I really just appreciate that from well, you guys across the board. That's also called e you're either away from motivated or you're toward yeah. motivated. Yeah. And the problem is if you're away from motivated, you are you're focusing on what you don't want. Right. So if you say, I want to lose however many pounds, that is away from motivated. Mm. You, mm. you need to say, I want to weigh this many pounds. Right. I, this is what I want to weigh. And then focus on weighing that much. And when you focus on what right. you want, you're headed that direction instead of away from something else, because totally. the away from is going to take you farther away from what you want. Totally. And so that's the problem is that we are constantly in that that space of focusing on either away totally. from what we what we don't want instead of I just don't want to be in pain anymore. I just don't want to, you know, whatever. It's always I don't want this, I don't want this. So that's not actually moving you towards what you do want. Totally. Instead of maybe I don't want racism. It's like, have you thought about what a world to. looks like of what you do want? Right. right. Like what does that actually look like? create, let's start focusing on creating. Yes. That. Yep. And that's exactly the thing. That's one of the reasons why we're like, we talked to, um, our friend, he's our best friend, Tal Witty. He's one of the paleo effect speakers. Mm -hmm. He's black. And, um, he, um, has been actually, um, kind of consulting with us and our team around racism and everything. And it's interesting because one of the things that he's, he's talked about with us is this polarity because we've got the two ends of the spectrum. You're either a racist or you're not. There's no in between. <laughs> and at the end yeah. of the day, you can claim that somebody else is a racist and that you are anti-racist, but, but have you worked towards that? Because you aren't suddenly not racist. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that we're gonna say, we're gonna say the same thing. That's why we're working at it. We, that's why we are actually involved with him and actually really learning from him what it's, what it's been like for him to be a black man in the United States. It's not easy. And the thing is, is that I know one thing is that I don't have to worry about if I'm in my neighborhood, which is a, a nice neighborhood in Austin, that I'm driving down the street in a BMW. I'm not getting pulled over because of my race. Mm -hmm. Is there a possibility it could happen to Ta? Yes. And I am totally aware of that. The thing is, is that what I have to do is know that my, my focus is on, it's not on not being racist. It's on being a uh, pro human, all humans, period. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you look like, what you sound mm -hmm. like, what you, I don't care what you believe. You can, you can believe that, you know, the president should live on the moon. I don't, it, none of it matters. Right. The thing is, is at the end of the day, am I focusing on being a good human to all humans, right. all humans, right. no matter who you are. And that includes all the people that have denounced us. That includes all of the people that um, may not like us, all of the people that think we're racist, whatever. It doesn't matter. I love you. And I still will say I reject that projection. 
And the thing is, is at the end of the day, we're all projections. Mm -hmm. That's all we are. So when you call somebody else a racist, that's your own personal projection. Mm -hmm. And so when I had to really take a look at all of those mm -hmm. things, when people were saying these things about it, okay, where are the places where we are, we are not being sensitive, where we're not being, mm -hmm. um, a good human to other humans, uh, to our black friends, to black people mm -hmm. that we don't even know, to, to, um, you know, Hispanic people, to wh whatever, it's all cultures. And where is it that we need to actually get better? And that is focusing on actually being, just being a good human, not just being anti-racist. I love that so much. Because it's, that's still a way yeah. from. Right. Mm -hmm. This choosing what we do want, focusing, mm -hmm. driving toward visualizing, right? Checking ourselves. I hear that, like that self-check, that self-evaluation. Same thing with me when it's, people are slamming me. I'm like, okay, how did that, what could I have done differently to mm -hmm. not maybe trigger somebody so mm -hmm. much? Maybe I could deliver, show a little empathy before I deliver that message. Maybe I could soften it. You know, and I think that's important for all of us to look inside of ourselves and say, Ooh, do I have some of that going on in me? Let me check. Hmm. You know, and then, and growing from there, but then focusing and visualizing on what we do want, like across the board, you know, goal setting 101. If you understand how <laughs> yeah. the subconscious works, the subconscious doesn't understand not. No, nope. it doesn't write. It doesn't understand yeah, negative. It just hears the thoughts and that you're thinking about. <laughs> your conscious mind is the goal setter. The subconscious mind is the right. goal getter. I, and so, so it, it focuses on whatever the it is, not the qualifier, not the not it focuses on what the it is. So when you right. say I am an anti-racist, your subconscious only hears the racist, racist. part. It right. does not get the anti, it doesn't understand negative and it only knows right now. <clears throat> so the problem is, is when we say that is instead is saying, I love all humans. Mm -hmm. I accept all humans. I, you know, those are the things that, that when we really started looking at this and this has been training with Ta and Cole Witty, um, who we work with a lot. And then, um, Deb and Brandon Yeager is working with them in our, we've been in NLP training and really understanding we are such a, um, um, citizenry that focuses on everything we don't want. Right. Yeah. And we are, and this is the other thing too, is you can claim one thing today. That doesn't mean that's who you are. Mm -hmm. And until you do the work and put the work in to become that person, you, you, you're not. And so overnight, it's interesting. I've seen so many different, because we do have a lot of black friends, um, them, they post a lot of things saying, you, you're sitting here trying to claim that all these other people are racist, but what you're doing is inherently racist. Mm -hmm. what, how can a white person call another person racist when they've never experienced racism in their life? Mm -hmm. And so, th and then I'm just like, oh crap, I've done that. Like mm -hmm. I've felt like I haven't openly said it to anybody, but I have felt like, man, they're really racist or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think I've said it to one person who made a comment to me in an email while calling me a racist actually made really mm -hmm. racist comments about talk. And so it was very, very interesting. And it was one of the people that denounced us. And so that's probably the only one that I can say I have definitely said, oh, wow, that's really racist or whatever. But at the end of the day, when we are looking at everything until we do the work, Mm -hmm. Until we all do the work, mm -hmm. we are not professionals at not being racist. Mm -hmm. We have grown up in a country that has been highly racist. And we have, uh, I mean, when you think, just think about the shit that was allowed a few years ago that, that they didn't go after these people or whatever. You talk about, um, like, for one thing, um, our, our, our politicians, um, particularly Biden, for one thing, I if you... If anybody played back right now the Clarence Thomas hearings and how he spoke to Clarence Thomas, a Supreme Court justice nominee at the time, and now a Supreme Court justice, if you listen to how he spoke to him, called him boy throughout the whole thing, Oof. was very, yes, it was, very it's derogative. so racist and yet it was okay. And the thing is, is like, you know, all of these things, it, it's it's all of them. I, so it's not just Democrats and it's Republicans too. They're corrupt all across the board. It's both sides. It's two sides of the same coin. It's you watch and see the stuff that has been allowed and only in the last, you know, stuff that was only happening a few years ago was allowed and it was so racist. And you know what? 
This is the other thing. If you have ever laughed at a racist joke, I had to really check myself on that. Shit, I have laughed at racist jokes. I've laughed at racist jokes that my black friends told. Mm -hmm. And and at the end of the day, so how do, do we all, that? how do, yeah, how do you <laughs> undo all of that? And that's the whole mm -hmm. thing is, is that, do we allow any of it? Do, at what point do we go, okay, now we're humans. We poke fun at each other for this, that, or the other. Where is it that it's a little bit of comedy and us being a little bit of um, self-aggrandizing? Mm -hmm. Is it, no, not aggrandizing, um, self-deprecating. Sure. Self-deprecating a little bit. Where do we go in all of that stuff? And that's where I was t actually talking about a little while ago is we've got these polarities. But one of the things that, that Todd talks about so much is that what about all of this in the middle where there's no larity? Mm -hmm. We don't, we just pretend all of that doesn't exist. And he's like, yeah, that's really where true. the juice of life is, is mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. not in the polarities, extremes, not totally. in the extremes. It's here because this is where the majority of people live, but we don't ever think about that. We don't ever talk about that. And the thing is, is that, you know, sitting down, it's been absolutely eye-opening to have conversations with Ta around racism because of his perspective. He has had, he's had stuff happen with cops. He's been through that. I've not been through that. Keith, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Keith has been through cop stuff, but not because of his skin. <laughs> <laughs> that was back in high school and Next college. Next episode. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, um, but you know, that whole thing is you haven't had that experience. Most of us have not had that kind of experience mm -hmm. because of our skin color or whatever. Mm -hmm. And to have him talk about some of it and then joke around some of it and be, and be like, it's okay to laugh at some of this and then it's a and then there's a point where it's not okay mm -hmm. and figuring that middle ground and the only way we all learn that is by having grace for each other and being like hey you know that comment was a little yeah. you know oh uh, you might right. want to think of re evaluate that or whatever and at the end of the day we can make jokes about white people we can make jokes about all kinds of people and yet when any jokes are told about black people, unless a black person is telling it, it's racist. And it's like, when do we get to just be like humans? When right. do we all just get to like have fun with each other and realize we each have our shit. Like white people have their shit and black people have their shit and Hispanics have their shit and Asians have their shit and every other you know race, creed, Indians, whatever, you name it. They have their shit. And at some point we can't, we need to realize there's a point where you can, you need to be able to joke with each other and, and be like, oh, that was really dumb or whatever mm -hmm. and learn from it. Mm -hmm. And right now it's just, you're just shut down and you're canceled and there's no conversation mm -hmm. and there's mm -hmm. no, no grace around any of that. And there's no way for us to get better if there isn't conversation. There's just no way. I appreciate you guys having the the courage mm -hmm. and the strength inside yourselves mm -hmm. to speak about things, even though everyone wants to silence you. Everyone wants to say, be quiet, you know, and there's a lesson in that because I know that you guys are very heart centered people. Mm -hmm. And if I said something, you know, right now that was like totally off the, like kind of off, mm -hmm. I feel like you would say, Hey, afterwards, yeah. <laughs> like, or yeah. maybe right now, like, <laughs> well, sort of, you know, yeah. and that's just being a good friend. That's just being a, a transparent person who's listening to understand and then share back feedback right. coming from where you're at. And I appreciate you guys having the courage to do that. And, mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lesson for all of us. I was just going to say like with my kids, I've noticed if I ask my kids, what do you, what do you love about dad, your dad, right? Mm -hmm. They'll be like, uh, he's nice. Uh, he's funny. You know, they'll have like two or three things. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what do you don't like? Right I don't like it when he does this. And I don't like what they have like a million, same thing with me. What do you, what do you like about me? They're like, mm -hmm. well, you make good dinner. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then what do you not like? When I don't like it when you yell at me. I don't like it when you, you know, it's yeah. easier I've learned from that because I ask some questions like that. Because it's we're easier, programmed. It's easier to do that. <laughs> to identify what we don't like. Right. It's easier. It's more of a base level thing. And it's more difficult to focus on visualizing mm -hmm. what we do want and, right. and create. It's a, it's more, a more evolved state. Yeah. And what you guys are challenging people on and asking is saying like, Hey, 
we're, we're not going to play and don't and shouldn't and shame and be quiet. And not mm-hmm. to, we're going to push this message of no, let's focus on what we want to create. We want to create middle ground. We want to yeah. create unity. We want to create conversations, mm-hmm. you know? So anyway, I just appreciate you guys Thank you. doing that. I well, really it's, I, I can say, honestly, it's, um, it's been, um, work, a lot of work to actually do that because that's because we've all been programmed from the time we were little, because when you think about it, when you were, when you were born and you started like walking around, getting around, everything was, don't touch that. Don't do this. Right. Don't do that. Right. It was everything away from, right. Instead of, I would yep. like for you to do this. I would yep. like for you to do that. And the thing is, is that we learned through those things too, is that we were told not to do something. Then we got hurt. Then we knew. So then it's this all, we were programmed to be away from motivated. And it takes work to become toward motivated yes, and to actually keep reevaluating. I don't want to, oh wait, no. What do I want instead? What do I want to yes. move towards instead? Right. It's work and yeah. it's not, and I can tell you, we still struggle with it every day. We yeah. work on what do we want instead? What do we want instead? Because the, the little, you know, <clears throat> the negative thing comes in what we don't want all the time. You just, it's reprogramming and reprogramming and reprogramming because we've been programmed all of our lives for this. You, mm-hmm. Same thing in school. So you just go through, yeah. everything is sit in your seat, don't get up, don't talk, right. don't do whatever. It's, right. it's all the away from. And so until we really consciously mm-hmm. have to start reprogramming that and undoing and unraveling all of that programming that's happened to us all of our lives mm-hmm. and not, it's not anybody's particular fault. It's just how our world has been set up and mm-hmm. we have to, we, we, we have to be the ones that undo it. That's right. Look at fear and shame are prisons, right? Yeah, they are. They They're are literal prisons that, and oh. the, the effect on the body is a constant state of stress to be in both of those, to be in fear mm-hmm. or to be shame, be yep. in fear, be in shame. And it's a constant stress mm-hmm. on the body, which does what? wrecks the immune system, wrecks yep. your health. It's so yep. in a self-serving sense, mm-hmm. we get away from both of those yep. because we want our immune systems to be rocking and rolling yep. and we won't live in a mental prison. Right. Mm-hmm. We're not going to do it. That's right. Um, so we disavow both of those feelings as much. Now we can't put a total block on it, but I get away from those yep. as fast and as soon as I can, as soon as I yep. see it pop up, I'm away from it. Yep. Mm-hmm. I get, I put distance, Same. not just away from, but towards what I do want. That's right. right. And I was getting towards ready to say, I mean, toward, yeah. So, you know, the first step, a hot stove uh, away from the next step is go towards something that I want, right. not something that I don't want. So, right. you know, just keep that in mind. It is both mm-hmm. a mental prison. Mm -hmm. It's a literal prison and it is a wreck to your internal health to be in constant fear Mm -hmm. and to be in shame or shaming someone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm. Amen. That's such a powerful message and so needed right Mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. It's like, where do you, it's a choice. All of this is a choice of where, what space do you want to live in? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I would, I, the same as me, as soon as I'm like, well, what if this happens? I don't, I don't like to live like that. So I'm just not going to entertain those thoughts. And it takes practice. I mean, (laughs) but if you become aware of it, you become better and better and better. Just like giving gratitude. If you're aware to realize what you should be grateful for and to plug that in and to plug that in yep. and to plug that in, then yep. you get better at it. That's right. And so, um, I know you had asked about it a little while ago. So our book, um, primal uprising is, um, will be coming out in, in April and, the whole book is around the seven pillars of health and it is about getting what you want and to, to start being toward motivated and not away motivated. So one of the things that you'll hear uh, when we talk is we'll be like, I love you and not, I love you, but Mm -hmm. because the, but just negated everything you said before the, but Mm -hmm. so it's, I love you. And I'm not happy with what you're doing right now, or I'm not happy with how things are with us right now or whatever it is. 
because at the end of the day, it's separating the person from the behavior that you don't like, because the person is not that behavior. That person is just behaving that way right now. Right. And so that's the problem that right. we, we put everything together that way is, yep. um, a person is an addict, a person is a whatever. And it's not, that's not true. Right. A person is acting has a behavior like an addict right now, right. right now. Right. And if you start seeing things that way and you start separating those things. So this is the deal at the end of the day, everybody is capable of change. Everybody is, is able to be a different human be being every single day. It comes down to every single choice that you make of everything that you do every single day. And that is, yep. do you want to be toward motivated or away from motivated? Do you want to love people and accept people and be um, welcoming to all people? Or do you want to, to be prejudiced, racist, whatever the case may yep. be? Those are the things in every little, de um, every single decision that you make every single day puts you yep. toward one thing or away from something. So yeah. you get to make the choice of what that is. And that's, yeah. so the book Primal Uprising is um, really, in our opinion, we believe we're all in a human zoo and that we all own the keys to the cell door and we can all walk out whenever we want. It's whether or not you want to do the work to get to actually open the door because being kept is easy. Mm -hmm. It's easy. Mm -hmm. And living a life free and um as a critical thinker is not exactly as easy as it is to be taken care of by you know the powers that be mm -hmm. and at the end of the day that's also not being a human mm. so when we have when you look at zoo animals that are in captivity that are not in the natural mm. environment it's the same thing for us wow. we are not in our natural environments we are not living the way that we were intended to live um and we all get to do something about it if we want to. So the book is really about freeing your mind. So it's actually called Primal Uprising, The Paleo Effects Guide to Optimizing Your Health, Expanding Your Mind, and Reclaiming Your Freedom. I can't wait. I cannot <laughs> wait. Yeah. If you guys have not experienced Paleo Effects, please attend the virtual event. Uh, it'll be, when we release this, it'll be like next weekend. So November 14th. 14th. Mm -hmm. So um, you can get a taste of what the magic that these two have created. And then go to the 2021 event and meet all your friends and every professional connection you could ever want right. and have the time of your life and read their book before you go so mm -hmm. you can understand the magic behind the machine. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, so. the book will be out literally the week before, so you can get the book at the, the event and we'll sign it for you. Ooh, yeah. even better. Yeah. And you can pre-order it yes. at the virtual event. Yes. So beat the rush. Yes. Right on. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thank you, Tara. Appreciate it.